now it's become one of the most popular ways to get fit fast. But high intensity interval training uh, has also been hit in the headlines after some experts claimed it could harm our health and our hearts. But is doing short bursts of high intensity exercise actually bad for you? We've been doing some as part of Strictly Fitness. So Angela Ripon investigates in this week's Truth or Scare. When I was a young girl, Sir Roger Bannister completed the four-minute mile. It was a historic moment in athletics because for decades before then, people had said you simply wouldn't be able to do it. Headlines then claimed that the strain from pushing himself so hard would be too much on the body and could even be fatal. Luckily, this proved not to be true. Preparing for the event by training in short sessions to fit around his work, Sir Roger was very much a pioneer because now, almost 70 years later, that kind of extreme workout is very, very popular indeed. It's known as high intensity interval training, or HIT. As the name suggests, HIT involves really high intensity exercise of any kind, sometimes four minutes at a time. It's followed by a rest to recover. Ooh and then repeated at regular intervals. Right, 10 seconds, come on. The HIT method has become so popular that nearly one million people tuned in to watch Joe Wicks using it in one of his lockdown exercise classes, breaking a Guinness World Record. Guys, this is it, the last move. Its supporters say the intensive workout is just as good or even better for you than traditional exercise, but with minimal time required. But just like in Roger Bannister's day, there are also claims that these short, sharp bursts of activity could be bad for your health. Well, to help us sort out fitness fact from fitness fiction, I'm meeting Dr. Ian Lahart. He's senior lecturer in exercise physiology at Wolverhampton University. So tell me, what would HIT do to your body? What difference would it make compared, say, to doing an hour running on a bicycle or, or in a Pilates studio? Well, it allows you to do more work in a shorter period of time. It increases your heart rate above what it would uh, during moderate intensity exercise. You have to use more oxygen and you should be burning more calories during a, a shorter period of time. And presumably, it's something that's ideal for people who don't particularly want either the expense or the time spent in a gym. Yeah, it's really adaptable. It's not the type of exercise that is, that's important, it's the intensity is key. To see if HIT really is as effective as it sounds, we're putting it to the test. With the help of two volunteers, fitness fanatics Karen Higgins. I do one, maybe sometimes two HIT a week. And Matthew Flower. I would be really interested to know if there were either any negative impact of, of, of HIT classes, but equally if there are any, any other benefits. We wanted to see if you can burn 200 calories quicker doing a HIT workout compared to a moderate intensity workout. For their first test, Karen and Matthew cycled at a medium intensity, around 70% of their maximum heart rate. Your heart rate sits at 120. When the 200 calories marker was reached, they stopped and recorded their times. The next day, they both took part in a HIIT workout. Again, their aim was to burn 200 calories. But this time, they intensively exercised as hard as they could at their maximum heart rate for eight seconds, followed by a period of 12 seconds active rest. And using that high intensity method, both Karen and Matthew burned 200 calories in almost half the time it had taken with moderate intensity training. Yeah, it was much quicker today than it was yesterday, but for me, I preferred, I didn't think I would, but I did prefer doing the longer exercise, but more gentle. It, it was shorter in duration, but I found it much more enjoyable. It would seem to be a more effective uh, and efficient way of exercising in terms of burning calories. They may have had different preferences, but our two guinea pigs found that a short HIT workout is effective for keeping fit and saving time. But that still leaves the question of whether it's dangerous. I think really to, to sum up those headlines, Ian, 
quite a lot of them are suggesting that actually they could uh, be quite dangerous to your heart. True or, or scare? I think mostly scare. I think the vast amount of evidence suggests that HIT is good for your heart. It improves your cardiovascular fitness. I think uh, for people who are really unaccustomed to HIIT exercise, it's about being sensible and gradually increasing their intensity um, and not going all out straight away. If somebody has an underlying condition, then it's important to remember that that underlying condition doesn't go away as soon as you put your trainers on. So those people just need to be sensible. But for the vast majority of the, of the population, HIIT is a really time efficient, effective and safe way to, to exercise. High intensity workouts are certainly a great way of introducing exercise into your life, especially if you're very tight on time. But providing you get good advice and you progress at a steady rate, then certainly the health benefits outweigh any potential risks. Now, where's that bicycle? Thank you, Angela.